If I want it to fit inside of that outside chain, you see I can manually go to the guide curve step, and I want to pick these as separate guide curves, meaning I want this element, this arc down here, this line, and this part of the tar top arc up here to be one guide curve. I can accept that. You see it takes the shape of it, and I can pick the other three elements on the other side and accept that, and you see that it takes the shape of it. So what it's doing is it's going from cross-section to cross-section to cross-section, and I'm applying two guide curves to that to get that shape. The next example, you see I have a simple example, meaning I just have four curves. I have four arcs here. They are attached via blue dots. So what a blue dot is, is you'll see this command up here. I can go to blue dot and go from endpoint to endpoint to, to, connect, to create those blue dots. I can also do a dynamic edit on those blue dots, which you'll see in a minute. To create this blue surf, if I go to blue surf, once again, I'm going to pick cross section to cross section. I want to apply these guide curves on the side, so I'm going to manually go to the guide curve step, which I'm on right now, and I'm going to pick this guide curve and this guide curve, <coughs> and you see that it takes takes the shape of of the um, the guide curve. I'm going to completely get out of the blue surf command. Now, what what right? Like I said earlier, we had four sketches down the side, not much control over the center of that surface as far as the contour goes. One cool tool within Blue Surf, if I edit the definition and go back in there, is I have a tool called Insert Sketch. If I go to the Options dialog box in Command Bar, you will see that I have Curve Connectivity here. It's coming up right now. If I have Curve Connectivity, I can use Pierce Points or Blue Dots. Right now, it's default to use Blue Dots. And like I said, Blue Dots are, are um, are points where we can edit the, the, where the curves are connected, and you'll see that in action here in a second. So as I create these new sketches, we're going to create blue dots where they intersect. So maybe I want to do a plain normal curve, and I want it to be a quarter of the way down there. I'm just filling out the prompts uh, over in Command Bar. Maybe I want this one to be halfway down, down that curve. And notice how as I'm placing those, it's just placing a... Um, a, uh, a, a sketch inside the blue surf, inside the command. So it knows that those sketches are going to go through there. Maybe I want them to go in the other direction. I do a plain by plain normal to curve in that direction. You know, maybe I want that one to be a quarter of the way up. Maybe I want this one like, like I did on the other side, 0.5, half the way up. And maybe I want the final one to be three quarters of the way up. So I'm just typing in where I want it to be over in command bar. And notice how it's placing those sketches. So what you're going to see is kind of a, a mesh, if you will, over that surface where I've inserted those sketches. Now those blue dots were created where each of those curves intersect. So on my screen, if I double click on one of those blue dots, that'll do a dynamic edit. You'll see a triad that comes up on the screen. And with this, this triad, I can say, hey, I want to lock this in the Z direction. Over in command bar, you see that I can give it X, Y, Z. Maybe I want to do a delta value, meaning I want that particular blue dot to move up um, you know, 10 millimeters or 5 millimeters. I'm going to type in 5 and say move that blue dot up. Therefore, that, that surface will change and take that shape. So blue dots along with um, blue surf allow you to make change. Let me go ahead and open up a, a part. And actually, what I want to do is show you the entire workflow. I want to go through the entire um, process that I had on the slide. So if I come back to this slide, you'll see that step one was create 2D sketches. Step two is to create 3D curves. Sketch three is to fill in the voids with our surfaces. And step four is to stitch them all together when they're watertight and it becomes a solid. So what I want to do is kind of go through that entire process and um, show you that workflow. So let me go back to Solid Edge, and you'll see kind of a, a, a thinnest shape here I have. This is actually a shell of an electric razor. You're going to see that it's a solid, and you'll see up in the history tree over here in Pathfinder that I've created an extrude and a blue surf and a bounded surface. I stitched them all together, and it became a body feature. So I kind of want to show you that, that process that we saw on the slide from scratch. 
And we're going to start up at the top by creating an extruded surface at the top of this, this particular razor. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just open a, a model, a straight, um, a blank model. And let's just create a sketch with that, that shape. And I'm going to do some lines and arcs like you saw there. I'll do a tangent arc off of there just to get the shape of the top of the, the extruded surface that you, that you saw on the, uh, the razor. And I can, I drew those pretty quick, so I'm going to put those tangencies through there. And set the, uh, set them equal to the um, um, arcs and so forth. Set the lines equal to each other. Maybe put that on the center. And let's add some dimensional values to that. I haven't done anything with those size and shape yet. And all I'm doing is creating a sketch and just constraining it. And like I said, I'm going to extrude from that. Now, the last thing I want to do is whenever I, I extrude this, this is going to be an infinite thin surface. So maybe for what I want to do later, and you'll see what I'm doing, I want to put a point. I don't know if you guys have used just the point command. Put a point right there at the origin. So now I have a point at the origin. And you'll see that, that there's my, my first sketch. Let's go up to the, the uh, extruded surface. And I'm going to go ahead and just apply that down a little bit. And there's my extruded surface. And if we, uh, what I, the reason why I put that point is I actually want to create kind of a, a right view sketch. And I want to have a spine come off of that. And what I mean by a spine is just a set of curves that's going to out, outline the shape. So you see now I have that point in the center, and at that point, it's allowing me to snap to something very easily. And let's go back to the sketch view. So I want to go ahead and make this tangent, go ahead and add a couple of, of dimensions to it to define this, length, this arc. And, and I also want to have another piece of construction. You'll see this come together in a minute. I'm going to draw another line off of here, tangent. And, and you'll see me do a plain normal curve. So that's going to be the spine of this electric razor. And you'll see that right there. If I come into the sketch, and what I want to do is create my cross section for my blue surf. So I'm going to just do a plain normal to curve, and maybe I want to, I could use a circle, but maybe it's more of a ellipse shape. So I'm going to do a ellipse by center. Once again, I'm going to find my pierce point. Just draw the ellipse both directions. I can go ahead and throw a couple smart dimensions on there to give that an actual size, maybe 15 and 18. All right, so what that's going to mark as one of my cross sections for my blue surf. Now maybe for my guide curves, I want to create another sketch with some B-spline curves. And what that's going to do is, is provide guide curves, like I said, to the blue surf. So I'm going to come up and, and do my curve command, just like we did when we first started the session. I'm getting a feedback from my, my uh, pierce points, letting me know that I'm attached to the other sketches. Come in and do some... Um, arcs just to finish that guy off. There we go. Alright, so I got the basic shape and those two curves I created are guide curves. So now let's create the blue surf. So I'm going to go to my surfacing tab, go to blue surf, and I can start from that vertex point, go right on up to my next cross section which was my ellipse, and I can go up to the bottom of that extruded surface for my third third um, um, cross-section to, to preview the blue surf. I come in then and go ahead and pick those beast lines as guide curves. And I'm going to pick the top and bottom. And I'm just take, using those guide curves to take the shape. So there's my blue surf. So if I rotate that around, you can see more of the shape. 
Now to make, I'm going to hide some sketches. Now, right now for this to be watertight for me to make this a solid, you see I need to fill in the top. So I'm going to go to bounded surface, which is sometimes called an inside of patch, and that will patch in that top, that top face. So now you see that that's all, all connected surfaces. So the final one, step four on my slide, was to do a stitch command. With the stitch command, you see that I will have a, um, a, an option for a stitch tolerance. If you have bigger gaps between your surfaces, you can make that tolerance larger to go ahead and grab those. In this case, I'm just going to window select all three of those. And you'll see that it knows that it, it's all one watertight surface. So it's asking me if it wants to become the base feature or the solid for this part. So then you see that I have the base feature. I have that. And if I go back to my home tab, you see I have tools like cut out and hole round, thin wall, and so forth to go ahead and, and start doing some more of those procedural type features that we need uh, for the model. So that was an example starting from scratch, creating curves, guide curves, cross sections, and also um, going ahead and creating a blue, blue surf, stitching them together, and making it a solid. One final example, I'm starting to run out of time, is this is what we started off the session with, with this this blue surf with these three curves uh, with the tear off sketch. And maybe we're going to use this as a, a, um, um, a construction surface. So what, I, what we went through in the last example was we did surfacing all the way up through, stitched it, made it solid. Here maybe we want to use it as a, a, just a construction surface to do something to an existing solid. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a rectangle underneath here and just create some, some solid material, a block, so to speak, underneath there. So right now this blue surf is my construction surface. And then we can use tools like replace face, boolean, divide part with those construction surfaces. So if I go up here and I'm going to do a replace face, it's just like it sounds. I'm going to replace the top face of this solid with the construction surface. And instantly it's going to go ahead and replace. And the model is going to take the shape of that surface and it's going to hide my construction blue surf. And like I said, you can tweak your curves with dynamic edit at any time. If I double click on this sketch and go right in there, even, even though I'm at the solid, notice how I can tweak this curve and, and change the direction. And then you remember this was the curve that didn't have, um, wasn't associative to the original, so I can move that one separately. And I can pull and I can constantly tweak and get the shape that I want from my uh, my dynamic edits, my blue dots, and so forth. So to, to sum up here, surfaces are only as good as your underlying curves. So that's very important. You can use tools for curves on the surfacing tab to help create and project curves. Maybe we want some different 3D curves. Those tools like intersection curve. And to become a solid, surfaces must be stitched together, kind of watertight, airtight, however you want to say it then they're able to become a solid. You can use dynamic edit for curves and blue dots to get a real-time update of your surface. You see me dragging around those curves, and the surface is updating, and the model updating as well. And also there at the end, you saw an example of replace face. So you can also use surfaces for construction, whether we insert those with a part copy or do an inner part copy in the context of the assembly between parts. We can do tools like Boolean, replace face, to get those, those shapes. So sometimes a construction surface is, is all we would need. Just to wrap up here, our, our Ally PLM Lunch Bites, are, we're putting, the, um, putting these sessions up on a YouTube channel. This is our YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com slash AllyPLM. So you can see a replay of the surfacing one here and also the rendering one is up there. Uh, we'll try to get that up uh, by the weekend tomorrow, uh, the replay of the surfacing one. And I just want to thank you guys for your attention this afternoon. I hope you found this session informative. Like I said earlier, if you uh, have any suggestions for future lunch bike topics, uh, please send those in the email. If you had any questions about anything that happened during a session, maybe you want to watch a replay, or just, just please email us questions. And also, you know, if you guys need any help with anything, just let us know. Let our technical support team know. And... Um, I really appreciate your time, and we will talk to you in two weeks. Thanks.